Hey, this is Andrew Brown. In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, Elastic Beanstalk, which is a service I've used a lot, but I can never remember how to use it, even though I have uh, tutorialized the heck out of it. Um, but that's okay. We're just going to go ahead and give it our, our best our best shot here. Elastic Beanstalk does have a CLI, so I think that would be really fun to use. Um, for this in particular, generally, you want your projects to be uh in their own repo but i think this is okay i'm going to go ahead and, and, and attempt it here in AWS examples and worst case uh we'll just move it into a separate repo um but elastic beanstalk has its own uh elastic beanstalk has its own cli and so i think that's something that we can go ahead and utilize here today to create ourselves a new environment or what have you um, i'm just going to create a very simple application i'm going to uh, make this a rails app so we'll just make a new directory here. So this is gonna be Elastic Beanstalk. I'm just gonna CD into that. Um, and I mean, that's all I really need for here, but I'll just say basic, just say basic. And Ruby's already installed on this machine. So, you know, if you don't have Ruby and stuff like that, you're using your local developer environment, you're gonna have to figure it out yourself, but I'm gonna go ahead and say Rails new, or is Rails even installed? Uh, well, we'll just try it, Rails new. Uh, example. And actually you might want to configure that to just have bare bones stuff. So Rails, documentation, um, Rails new. Because <laughs> there's a couple things I, I just don't want here. Getting started with Rails. Somewhere in here there should be, yeah. We can do Rails new help. Okay, Rails new Hyphen hyphen help. Bundle, we'll just say gem install Rails. Rails is just a very simple web framework and it's very easy to deploy that with Elastic Beanstalk. So we're gonna just have to quickly build an application. Um, again, it just has to be really dead simple. Um, and I just wanna configure it with having nothing in it. So once Rails is installed here, um, it'll take a little bit of time here, but once it's installed, we'll go ahead and just configure it to not have all uh, like stuff we don't need. All right, so Rails is now installed. We'll go ahead and just type in Rails new hyphen hyphen help because uh, there's a few things I just don't want to have. Um, so I'm just going to care for the look here through the options. So I mean, I don't really need a database. Yeah, defaults to SQL, SQL like three, which is totally fine. Um, we could hook, hook this up to MySQL or Postgres. That actually might be a better idea. Um, Skip git, skip docker, skip keep, skip action mailer, skip asset pipeline indicates when to generate, skip asset pipeline. So I don't want the asset pipeline. I don't need action cable, though it doesn't really matter. Skip JavaScript, that's probably what I'd want, skip JavaScript. So a hyphen J, capital J, and a, we'll just skip, yeah, we'll just skip hyphen J and hyphen A. So say Rails, new, hyphen A, hyphen J, because I don't want um, the asset pipeline. That's for like compiling SAS and stuff like that. Again, this is gonna be really simple, dead simple. So we don't need anything complicated here. Uh, should we hook up a database? Probably, don't really want to. I just wanna launch an app without a database. I'm just thinking if we can do that without a database, we probably just should. So I'll go here and just say hyphen D PSQL. Um, everything else looks fine here. We don't really need tests. We'll just skip tests as well. And we still need to name this. So this is going to be in what order new. So Rails new in the app path. Okay, so this here is just going to be example. We'll hit enter. We'll hit up. Um, it has to be PostgreSQL. There we go. That's going to provision us a Rails app. This shouldn't take too long. While we're waiting, um, we'll probably want to configure uh, Docker here to um, have Postgres running in the background so that we can utilize it. So just give me a moment to go find a Docker Compose file. 
So here was a, a Rails project I was going to build and it has this Docker Compose YAML file into it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that. And of course you can just find this in the repo and I'm gonna make this in our basic directory here. So just a file docker hyphen compose YAML. I'll paste that in here. And so what this file has is it will start up a Postgres database with a username of Postgres and a password of Postgres. So to start that, we'll just say docker We'll need another tab for this, but um, we'll see the into EB and basic. We'll say Docker compose. We'll maybe just Docker up. Okay, Docker compose up. I'm not doing this every day. Like I've obviously done this a lot, but I always just kind of forget. But anyway, there, yeah, that's, there's the command. It used to be hyphen Docker, com Docker hyphen compose up. So that's gonna start up a Postgres database and you can see that it's now open on port 5432. Let's go over to our, um, our example repo. And so in here, we'll need to configure the database. That'll be under the database YAML file. And so for development, um, this one is Postgres. And then the password is password, I believe. If we go back over to here, that's what it is, good. There's a bunch of junk in here. I don't care about test. We're not even, we don't even have tests for this, so we'll just get rid of this. For production, we'll have to configure something completely different. But yeah, Postgres and password, that is totally fine to hard code that. We obviously won't do that for production. Um, so that is configured. I'm gonna go over here and let's see if I can start uh, work with my Rails app. So I'm gonna CD into it and it's going to make some changes here. And we'll do a Rails start and we'll do we can do start here. We're gonna do binding 0.0.0.0. I just know that we need to do that when we're running in a development environment like this. Um, we're in the right directory, right? We'll just do bundle install again. It should know the, oh, you know what? We'll do bundle exec in front of it. Bundle exec. Okay, bundle install. I thought I already installed everything, but maybe not. So we'll do a bundle install there and just wait a moment for that bundle install to complete. And while that was uh, installing, I just took some time to just write that stuff up. So if people are looking for it, it's in the readme here in the basics directory, not the examples directory. Let's go ahead and see if we can start up our uh, application here. And uh, it seems to be acting a little bit funny here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reload. As that always seems to kind of help um, when I'm having issues with Gitpod. You, again, you might not be having any of these issues and it's just me when it hangs like that. Um, I'm not sure if these ones will be responsive. Oh no, that's fine, okay. Go back to the front here, bundle exec. I'm hitting uh, control E, which just goes to the end, but it's uh, triggering that command up there. And so we're gonna try to start it. Um, uh, B's for bind. Rails start bind. Isn't it hyphen B for bind? Binding rail start. Okay, we don't know, we can type in uh, rails start help because there should be a, a bind it should be just hyphen B. Yeah, hyphen B. Okay, we'll try this again. Invalid option. Okay, let's just take out the bundle exec. What the heck? <laughs> it's right here. It shows me. It shows me that it's right there. Hyphen B. We going crazy here today? Um, okay, well, we'll give it its full name if that's what it wants. Binding. I mean, I know how to write Rails, so. <sighs> All right, just give me a second. All right, I'm not sure why the flags are not working, but normally you do a, a hyphen B to start it up. We can start it up uh, the regular way. I just don't know how it's gonna establish a connection to the database um, that way without it. 
And now it's telling me start doesn't work. Okay, bundle exec rails start. Okay, so it works there, hyphen B 0000. All right, now it's working, whatever. So we put a bundle exec in front of it, which I thought I was doing this entire time, but apparently not. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this command. One thing I changed here is that this is this is doing a, a S here instead. Um, but it's very important that we bind on 0000 so that we can establish a connecting to that local database. Not that we're doing too much with it, and you can see it's running over here. Um, so I'm gonna go back and CD into uh, this directory, okay, into our example. And so now our app should be running on port 3000. So if I go over here to port 3000, click through, it's gonna complain about this. This is a very common um, issue. And I think I have a solution for this in this repo. So I, mean, I should, also I don't have that code there yet. Oh yeah, here's a skeleton. We'll just go over to this. I'm gonna go into this application here. I think it's in the config environment. You can just copy and paste this into your own. And I'm looking for uh, this command here. So all this is doing, because Rails wants you, like in development, it really wants you to say like, hey, I approve um, this specific address. And so I'm using these environment variables from Gitpod. You could, if you're using GitHub code spaces, it's a little bit different. Uh, in fact, I think I should have the configuration somewhere here. I'm not sure why I don't see it here, but uh, yeah, you'll have to vary that. But you just listen to what they're saying here, which is like allow that uh, that address. Um, so because I changed that, I'm gonna have to stop and restart the application. We'll go back here, get us a refresh. And uh, we're getting closer to something. It's trying to establish connection, uh, connection to Postgres. But right now, we don't necessarily have even a database. So I'm going to just stop this for a second. And I'm going to uh, generate out a table. So I'm going to say Rails um, generate. And my, uh, my thing's uh, mucking up. So I'm just going to have to reload the window here. Sorry. Anyway, yeah. So we're just going to go ahead here and say Rails generate. Um, migration, I'm just going to say create tables. Okay, and so I've just created a table. It's just some basic data that I want to uh, have here because we're going to have a, a very basic table. I'm just going to say um, things. I'm just going to say t string name. And that will create ourselves a table. Uh, we could also seed some data. There is a seed file for this, but what I'm gonna do is just write it in line here just so that it uh, creates it right away. Thing dot create. And I'll just put an exclamation mark there if there's an error name. Hello world, goodbye moon. Okay, and um, I'm gonna need a model for that. Otherwise it's not going to let us create this. Yeah, or I think it should actually let us make it still, but I'm gonna go ahead and make that model. New file, we'll just say thing.rb. And in here I need to do class thing, and this is going to be application record. And that's all we need to be able to create that record. I'm gonna go down below and say rails uh, db create. I'll put bundle exec in front of there so that goes. And so this should really be the first part that we need to do. Um, we might need to create this database manually. Create database. Rails. Bundle exec rails db create. Um, and let me take a look here. So, I mean, this should be running. Yeah, so our Docker container is running. It's listening on port 000. It's on 5432, which is the default port for Postgres. And so we should be able to establish a connection. Uh, and again, this is a more re recent repo, so I probably wrote this somewhere. It would've been nice if I wrote it somewhere <laughs> as I had I'd done all that there, but um, just give me a second. I'm actually wondering if we have the full configuration in it, as I would normally set a little bit more than what we actually have here. Um, so what I'm gonna do um, and I'm actually not sure if this is 100% what I want, but I'm actually gonna copy this one here because I kind of prefer this one. And if we go into our database uh, YAML file, I don't think we have everything specified. So here it just shows the database and the password. It has no user and that's totally not right. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in here. 
And this looks a lot more right. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just say, this is example. And I'm gonna go ahead here, just change this to example. You can just copy and paste this out of, out of the repo to get the most accurate thing. There we go. And so this should probably, uh, is probably what we need to get this to work. We'll go ahead and do this. And so now it was able to establish a connection, no problem. So we have an example database. I'm gonna do bundle exec, hold on here. Uh, so we'll create our database, migrate database, which creates the tables, okay. Again, we're keeping this really simple. And if you're thinking, do I really have to learn how to build an app to, to work in cloud? Yeah, you should know how to do this. <laughs> it's basic stuff. Expect, like if you're gonna deploy an app, you should at least know how to run it. Um, but anyway, so we've created our table and it probably created those records as well. We can check by doing Rails S, or sorry, Rails C to get into the console. And I'll just do thing.all. And we can see there's records in there. I hit Q and then I'm gonna type in exit. Um, and so now what we can do is we can just uh, tweak our app a little bit here because it probably is working now. Um, can I just refresh this? It's not running right now, but uh, I'm just gonna go and run it. And this is, this needs another reload. And I've talked to Gitpod, they just don't care to help me. It's frustrating. I really like the product, but uh, as you can see, it just mucks up a lot and it's very hard to determine what the issue is. Even though it's probably just an extension I've installed, it's just not easy to debug. Um, but anyway, so I'm just thinking here for a moment. Um, yeah, we want to start up the app again. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And we'll go back over to here and give this a refresh. So we have our basic Rails app. This is just the first page here. And what we can do is we can uh, first update the routes. So in here, if we go to our routes under our config directory, we just want to point the route to somewhere. So I'm going to go here and just change this to application uh, home, because we already have an application controller. Normally you make additional controllers, but I'm cheating by just having a function here. We'll call this one home. And this one is going to get all the things. We'll just say things equal thing dot all. And then under our uh, view, we'll make a new folder here called things. And in this, we're gonna make a new index file here called index.html.herb. And all I wanna do is iterate through that. So um, we'll need a div. And within that div, we have some Ruby code. So we'll do this to use herb to print out Ruby. And we'll just say, cause we're gonna have thing.name. And then we just wanna iterate through this. So this is going to be this. So we'll say four, or we'll just say things.each do thing. All right. And then we'll go down below here and just type an end. And so now this should iterate through and print that out and we're pointing to that page. So let's go and take a look here and see if it works. Missing um, a home template. What are you talking about? I just put it right here. Oh, you know what? It's because this is supposed to be applications. So this is supposed to be applications, applications. And then this will be home because it's, it's based on convention, whatever you have it named, right? So go back here, I'll refresh this. And this is actually called application. So I'll have to rename this to just be application. And we'll refresh here. And so we have our basic page. That is our app, okay? So this is what we want to deploy. Um, so we're gonna do the Elastic Beanstalk CLI. And EB CLI install. So I need to find the installation instructions here. So here it says install using setup scripts. That sounds fine to me, I, I don't mind. Okay, I guess just down here. The easiest recommended way is to use the EBL setup scripts. Okay, great. The script also provides whatever for installations go here. All right. And if we go down below. Okay, what, what's the easy step? Clone the repo. We gotta, really, we gotta clone it? <laughs> that's, the, that's the easy step? All right, like, that's not the most straightforward way of doing that, but um, 
I'm just thinking here for a second. So uh, what we'll do, go to another tab here. I just want a CD out of our uh, directory. I'll just open another tab that wants to be unresponsive. And I'm going to go ahead and clone this repo, which to me is stupid, but whatever. And then we will copy the second command here. And so this should install the Elastic Beanstalk CLI. Uh, if for whatever reason we need to do this, so we'll just install ebcli. I really don't want to put that in my main directory. That's why I uh, put that out there because I don't want to persist for Git pod. And you shouldn't obviously generate uh, in your project like that. Um, so now it's installed. Let me just type eb and see if it actually is there. eb. No, so it says to do this. That means it's only going to work in this window. Elastic Beanstalk, no module named imp. This is terrible. Where is eb? So it is there. Cool but it doesn't work. Three, eight, three, nine, and three, 11. So what version of Python am I on? 312. So I can't use this stupid, stupid CLI. So um, because it's it does, it's not supported in the latest version, so I guess we'll just do click ops for this. Um, there is a way to create Python environments and have multiple installation versions. I'm not doing that. Okay, let's just go ahead and uh, manually provision this. It's a little bit sad because it would have been nice to, to be able to use the, um, the CLI here. We'll go ahead and create ourselves our application. I'm going to call this example rails. And notice we have two options, web server or worker. Uh, if we wanted to run background jobs, we do worker. We're going to go with web uh, server environment. Uh, this is, interface has changed again since the last time I've been here. It'll probably change in like a couple weeks. We'll go down here. Um, yeah, rails environment, managed platform. We're going to drop this down. We're going to go with Ruby. And 3.2 sounds really good to me. That's the latest platform version, sure. I'm gonna upload my own code and um, I'm gonna go ahead here, just also one thing uh, that I'll wanna do because this is, um, this is becoming unresponsive again, I'll just make a new tab, basic example. Uh, I'm gonna just delete out the um, the dot get directory here because we actually want to commit at least I want to commit this to my repo, and so that will allow all those files to show up here. Now if I go up a few directories, get status, get add all, get status. There we go, and I'll say get add, um, get commit, create a Rails app. I feel like there's more to the Rails app that we need to configure, um, like a secret key or something. But anyway, um, yeah, there should be something additional that we should have to do. Okay, well, I guess we'll worry about it until we actually uh, try to run it. So what I'm gonna do here is um, I'm gonna go back to Elastic Beanstalk and we'll just call this version one. And now what it wants is us to upload our, our code so it says, must be less than 500 megabytes uh, files. That's totally fine. Um, before we zip this, because that's a way we can deliver it, not the best way, but it is a way that we can bring our code over to Elastic Beanstalk. But I want to look in the database YAML file because this matters. I guess we can set our environment variables and change this stuff later. So that's totally fine. And so what I want to do is just right click this. And I want to compress this. Mm. Uh, zip directory Linux. 
It also matters like how you zip it because I think we want the folder in there. So recursively, this looks like the command that we want. So package for um, DB. And so we have zip hyphen R, this will be a uh, package. And this will be example. So I'm hoping that this will work. If we go to EB basic, hit enter. It looks like that works. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag it to my desktop. And once that is dragged to my desktop, if it ever decides to appear on my desktop, I don't see it. I'm gonna go ahead and just manually download it, download. Yeah, and so I'll go to my downloads. And what I'm gonna do is just open up the package and we'll take a look at what's inside of it. So here it has the example directory in there. So I'm hoping that that will work. It might not like that, but well, I guess we'll find out here shortly. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, upload that package. So just give me a moment to attach it here. All right, so I just went and chose the file. And so now it's attached. I believe it's under 500 megabytes, so that should be fine. Down below, we have some presets. They have really changed this interface quite a bit. We have single instance, um, and that would probably be the best option. I mean, like we do want to launch this with a um, RDS instance so that it will work. We'll go here to the free tier and we'll let it create a new service role. And we don't have a key pair. I don't really need to log into the machine because you can launch Elastic Beanstalk either uh, on containers or a virtual machine, but clearly it's doing a virtual machine here. Um, I'm gonna just launch this with Sessions Manager so we have this role that we keep using. We'll go ahead and hit Next. We don't need a key pair because we have Sessions Manager. Um, I don't need a worker. So I'll go Next. I'm not sure why it shows it like that. They really made this interface worse. I do not like this. We'll just choose our VPC here. So that's our default VPC. Um, I don't need it many places. I'll just choose one because I'm not launching multiple places here. It should have a public IP address. And we do need a database. And I'm gonna put it also in A here. We'll enable database to turn that on. So basically it's going to create a database for us. It's basically like a shortcut for creating a database. If you create the database at the time with Elastic Beanstalk, it will tear down everything. So if you skip this, you could then uh, retroactively attach it. That's not what I'm doing here today. Um, we want Postgres. We'll give it a moment here. Yeah, 16 is fine. Whatever the latest is, it should work. Uh, we don't need something large. Let's we'll say micro. T2, can't even type in this box. This UI sucks. Um, so I'm looking for dbt2. T3 is fine as well. They're both really inexpensive. Um, the username is going to be what? Let's go over to our, I'd rather just be our defaults, to be honest, um, if I can get away with that. I'm just going to delete this package here. We'll go into examples, into our config, into our database. And we have Postgres and password. So I'm gonna to try to get away with that. I don't think it's gonna let us do that. Postgres, um, password. I'm gonna look it up first. Postgres, password limits, uh, RDS. Must be equal to great of eight characters. I think that's the only thing that matters. Postgres, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Password, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think that should work. So we'll go back over to here. We can type that again. Password, uh, one zone, that's fine. I don't want to retain any database. We'll go ahead and hit next. It was actually nice that it would retain it. The decoupled database will remain available and operational. So it's cool that you have that option. Uh, before, like, you'd have to worry about it uh, getting teared down with the environment. Yeah, that's because I'm not actually setting a password. So just quiet, Google. 
And then here we have our root volume. Um, just use the default container default, that's fine. We'll go down below here. Our security group is going to need access to the internet. How's, uh, how, how else is it gonna work then? So I guess I'll have to create that separately. It's weird that you, you can't make that there in place. But really, there's really no reason for them to update the UI the, the amount of times they have. Like every time they've updated it, it's just gotten worse and worse. I swear it's just like people are trying to get paid so they just keep changing stuff. Um, so I'm gonna go over to security groups here. We'll create a new one. We'll just say my EBSG, my EBSG. We only have one here. I'm going to open this up for, um, that's outbound rules. I need an inbound rule. So we'll go here and this will be for HTTP and HTTPS, whatever we need to get this working. There we go. We'll go ahead and create that security group. We'll say for everywhere and for everywhere. I'll go back over to here. We'll give this a refresh. We'll add that security group. We do not want any scaling whatsoever. X80, x86.4 is fine. ARM would be fine as well, but I'm gonna stick with x86. Um, instant type should be, actually here, we actually have to go a little bit larger because T3 micro is not gonna cut it. Um, and I mean, you could run it, but it just won't run very well. So I'm gonna go here and choose a, I really wish you could search that. Like why go through all that effort and not make that searchable? <laughs> but I'm gonna go with a T2 medium. T3 medium, T3 medium. Not a T3A, just T3 medium. There we go. And yeah, it chose the AM, uh, AMI for us. We'll go next. All right. Um, basic is totally fine for us. I don't need enhanced. Yeah, basic. Manage platform updates. I'm not doing any updates. Uh, email notifications, no. Application deployment all at once. 100%, we'll ignore that. Deployment preferences, ignore health checks. False, x-ray, storage, uh-huh. Okay, and so here are some uh, options here. Normally you'd have to add another thing. So um, uh, NVARs, you need to configure Rails production. Cause there's some kind of like key that we have to generate. And I just always forget what it is until it tells me that I have to make it. Whatever, I guess we'll just wait until it tells us what it is. And I'm gonna go back over to here and we'll go ahead and hit next. And so this might not work if because we didn't bundle it right or we don't have the right environment variables, but hopefully that works out fine. We'll go all the way down to the ground. We'll go ahead and submit that. That was a pain to write. I really wish we could have used the Elastic Beanstalk CLI, but uh, you know they got to keep it up to date here. AWS has fallen behind the times here. They used to be always up to date. Now they're not. Maybe they shouldn't have laid off so much of their staff to save money or to make money, it's crazy. They're making more money and they're laying people off at the same time. We get out of date CLIs. I guess they think uh, AI is gonna write it for us. Anyway, we'll wait for this. This might fail, that's totally fine if it does, but we'll just give it a bit of time here, okay? We have an error here. Um, created failed. AWS RDS subnet group failed to create. Autoscaling group does not exist. Okay, we didn't set an autoscaling group, so why is it asking for that? So is it done? EB Gray Health. I mean, that means it doesn't hasn't done a check, right? Suspended, your application has a severe health issue and no longer being monitored, so that's what that means. And so we'll go back over to Elastic Beanstalk here. We can find it wherever it went. This tab here, um, health, logs, events. And so the thing is, is like, 
I don't want auto scaling because we told it to go to separate one. So it's bizarre that it's asking for that. AWS SEB auto scaling group does not exist for stack. Okay. So we'll go to configuration then. And we'll see what we have configured here. But I'm pretty sure we told it not to do auto scaling. We'll give this a moment to load. I guess it takes some time. Here we go. Um, yeah, that's right. Worker configure settings that are specific to worker tier environment. Did we, I thought we did not configure worker tier. So I'm not sure, exactly sure why it's asking that. Networking database, like why is this even, like I don't even want a, a worker. Uh, it's like, it's optional, but you couldn't really skip it now, could you? Um, networking database, so this should be fine, true. Let's go over to RDS and see if they actually spun it up. So go over to RDS here. No database created, so that can't be uh, can't be good. Um, let's edit this. Version one deactivate. I I don't care if it's activated or deactivated. Auto scaling group. Single instance. Select a single instance or load balanced environment. You can develop, well, I just want a single instance. Instance type, T3 medium. We'll go back to our events here. The following failed to create. All right, so, I mean, it looks like it's with the, with the, um, the database. So maybe we have to configure a second Instant, but like, I don't want auto scaling for my instance. So I'm not sure why, like even for my database. So let's go here to the database. Choose a subnet in each AZ for the instance that you, that run your application to avoid exposing your instance to the internet, run instances in private subnets. Uh-huh. Um, it should be an A, yeah. If your Elastic Beanstalk is attached to RDS, choose the subnets for your database, A and A. One AZ. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Well, we don't wanna change that. I'm not exactly sure why this error is popping up because we haven't actually told to do anything. So let me just do, do some research here. I'll be back in a moment. So here, uh, someone's suggesting to check the CloudFormation template and says that there might be a conflict um, with naming. So I'm going to go ahead here and go to our CloudFormation template. Again, I don't think that's the issue, but let's go investigate anyway, because this is, is provisioned by this way. So we'll go to events. And so here it says, failed to create. The DB subnet group doesn't meet Availability zone coverage. Current AZ coverage is CA Central 1. Add more subnets to cover it. So that's apparently our issue. So I'm going to go back over to here and go to configuration. I mean, I, I thought it could have been something like that. So that makes sense. And we will go, wait just a moment here and go to our database. And I guess we'll choose B. I, I don't know, maybe all three of them. I'm not sure exactly how many it wants. I'm just gonna put password in here again, password, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D, and we'll hit apply. Environment name, EMV is in valid state for this operation, must be ready. Okay, that's cool. Can I, <laughs> like if I can't update it, how can I fix the issue then? So, and then it keeps complaining about that. Google, just get out of here, this password manager. I don't even want to use it. Give me just a second. I just turned off uh, Google password manager, so it's less annoying. Um, I think we're going to actually have to tear this whole darn thing down. 
Well, it says create failed, but like we can't adjust it. So the only thing that we would be able to do is delete it. So I guess we'll just go and delete this environment. Also says the tier is worker, which is not what we wanted. And I don't remember selecting that. So I guess we'll just try this again. Enter the name of the environment. So we'll just go ahead and do this. And I'll create a new one, unless I actually clicked it by accident, like I, I did this by accident, but we'll go ahead and try this again. So we'll just say Rails env, for example. And uh, yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna just put two here just in case we have a naming conflict because sometimes that happens. This looks different. So I must have chose worker by accident before. And so I'm just saying example, A, B, uh, some numbers here. This is looking a lot more normal now, yeah. So I must have chosen it wrong before, 3.2. The other one, I don't even think gave us three, uh, version three. No, but yeah, I think it actually did, Never mind. We'll upload our code again. So let me just attach that here, one second. There we go. Uh, single, that seems fine to me. We'll go next. Uh, we did just create the roles, that's fine. We'll go use SSM, uh, EC2 SSM role. We'll go next. We'll choose our VPC. We'll choose A for instance, we want this to be public facing. Though I, I think that, um, yeah, we, yeah, we want a public IP address. I mean, if we didn't, I think it still would use that uh, Elastic Beanstalk address, so it might work, but just in case it doesn't. I think it wants more than one, so we'll give it all three. It will enable this. Uh, we don't need a snapshot. Uh, we'll choose Postgres here. Any day now, there we go, Postgres and frustrating that it clears it out and you gotta like scroll down and find it. T3 micro is fine. We'll say Postgres and then pass, password. And we're going to delete. We don't wanna retain, we'll hit next. If it can't do like more than one, it should tell us, I disabled this. I disabled that functionality, like Google, get out of here. Anyway, so that's fine. Um, this is fine. We'll choose this one here. Mm. I had the default one just in case. Single instance, that is fine. On demand, that is fine. X86, that is fine. I'm gonna go with um, T3, T3 medium, if I can find it. Again, if you are worried about spend, don't do this, but you know, you've gotta spend a little bit to learn cloud, unfortunately. It's uh, the free tier is kind of running out on us here to effectively do things, I'm saying. Uh, and Rails uses a little bit more memory, so it doesn't do well on anything smaller than a T, uh, T3 medium. I did not choose that one, so just be careful there. Go ahead and hit next. There we go. Okay, so health reporting, basic. No managed platform updates. I don't need email. All at once is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Um, we don't need any additional options. We'll go next. We'll just ignore that error. It's just kind of redundant. Okay. And I think everything is fine now. So yeah, I guess that worker tier definitely was not correct. Which is totally fine because we have to restart this anyway because of the database. And so hopefully this time it's going to work. Um, I'll see you back here when it either says it deployed successfully or if it did not, okay? All right, so far it's looking pretty good. I mean, the status is still um, gray, um, but I see no issues here. CloudFormation might be a good indicator if something's wrong. So it's still creating. Let's just see what resources it's working on. It is creating the database. So that will take a little bit of time. So we'll be back here in just a moment, okay? All right, so this looks like it has uh, completed. So we'll go ahead and give this a refresh here. And uh, yeah, so created all the resources. If we go over to our databases, we should see one here. So it is available, good. It says our environment's green. If our app works, that'd be great. I'm not sure how to migrate the data. So I don't expect data to be here. Um, we get a 502 bad, uh, bad gateway. So that's not terrible, but it just means that it's having uh, issues uh, routing it. Let's give this another uh, refresh here. And so this is where we might want to go in and debug the actual application. So this is probably running on an EC2 instance. So we'll go ahead and look that up. 
And because this is an instance, we should be able to get in here and do some debugging. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and connect to this instance here. And we'll use Sessions Manager and we'll connect. And so somewhere, <laughs> it's, it's somewhere um, located. I don't exactly remember where, but uh, I'm sure we can figure it out pretty easily. Uh, that's a lot of stuff, so. Where are apps installed on EC2 instance for EB? Temp deployment application folder, no. It's in my slides for sure, I just don't remember where. Just give me a moment to find it, okay? All right, so it's in var app current, so we have found it. Um, and now that we're in here, we could probably go check to see if it's running. I'm just gonna expand this a bit. So we can use PS aux grep to see if Rails is running. Um, and if it's running on Puma, I mean, it could be utilizing that or it could be using Webbrick. Uh, these are all different kinds of, um, how would I say? These are all different kinds of uh, web servers that can run the web framework. Let's take a look at what that proc file has in it. So that might indicate what we're supposed to do here. Um, here, there's this file. So it's clearly starting up with Puma, but the application did not necessarily start because I don't see one. I'm kind of interested in what is the configuration of this Puma file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm just gonna cat that out really quick here. It did not copy what I wanted to do. So I'll have to just uh, tab my way to completion here. Config, private, uh, Puma config.rb. And so it's expecting the app just to be in the directory. All right, so I think the issue here is that when we uh, zipped it, um, the app is in a folder and we don't want that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back here and I have a feeling that we could probably just change this to be period. And we'll go into example. I'm gonna go ahead and just try this here, okay? And so I'm hoping that that will then just put it flatly in that, uh, in that file there. So under our example here, I'm gonna go ahead and download this package. And then once that's downloaded, uh, once it's downloaded, there we go. Um, I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna look at its contents. And so now I'm getting a package where th this is where it's at. This is probably what it actually wanted, okay? So now that I have that package, I'm just gonna uh, go here and we'll just close this out because we don't need that right now. And that probably will deploy a new instance, I think, because I think that's usually what it does, unless it does in-place deployment. We talk about that in slides, so I don't exactly remember. But um, what I'll want to do is I want to um, deploy a new version. So we'll say upload and deploy here. I'm just going to zoom back out. And we'll need to choose that file. So give me a moment to choose that file. Great, so now we have the later version. This will just be two. And we'll go ahead and hit deploy. And so hopefully this time it will work out. If it doesn't, uh, we'll go into the instance. We'll take a look at that uh, directory and we'll figure it out from there. And we'll ignore that. I don't, we should just stop popping up like that, but we'll, we'll wait for this to complete, okay? All right, let's take a look here and see what errors we have. So it's okay if we do, let's just see what it says. During an aborted deployment, some instances have deployed the new application version, shell instances, et cetera, unsuccessful command, execution, and so I'm just reading through here and trying to make sense of what it's saying. Um, I don't think CloudFormation is going to tell us anything new, but we'll take a look here and see what it says. So it does show something wrong here. So nothing very useful. Um, waiting for Elastic Beanstalk. I'm gonna assume that's the health check. Maybe the health check failed. Go to logs here, see if we can see anything. Not very helpful. Unsuccessful command execution. Instance deploy fields. For details, see the EB log engine log. So I guess that's what I have to get a hold of. So just give me a moment. Actually, hold on here. It says, instance deployed failed to install dependency gems that you defined in the gem file. For more information, see the EB engine.log. Okay, uh, well, the question is, is the instance around? Because if it's not, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that. 
Okay, so the it's here. Um, but well, if it deployed it in place, then we will be able to find it here. sudo su hyphen ec2 user var was it uh, app current var app ls current so that's the old one that must be the new one if we go to the logs here okay notifying route style sheets uh, i'm not really worried about that let's see if the app is actually running ax grep rails or Puma, it is using Puma, we know that. Um, what if we try to do a bundle install? So we'll say bundle install. And so this might be the issue where it says your Ruby version is three, uh, 322, the version you specified is, is 323. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back over to my gem file here. And I'm just gonna take out that so that it's not uh, being so uh, strict about the version. I'm not sure if that's the issue. Um, we should probably try to see that EB uh, engine file, wherever it is, delete permanently. But that's probably what it was. Um, we'll go back here. What was it called? EB engine. Location of EB engine file. Linux. Bar log eb engine file. So we'll try to see if we can tail that. So we'll say tail hyphen f, or we just cat it, I suppose. Cat, paste that in here like that. Um, so it says install dependency failed command. So your reversion is this. Okay, an error occurred during the application. Install the dependencies file failed with the error command. 240, uh, don't bundle, don't run bundler as root. Installing your bundle as root will break this application. Not that I was doing that. And so I think it's this, I think it's the error that I just discovered. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go back over to Gitpod if I can find it. Here it is. And I'm gonna have to rezip this. So I think I deleted the last package. I'm gonna go try this again here. So we'll package it again. We will download the package. If I can find the download button, we'll give it a moment here. I'm gonna make my way over to um, here. And we'll go back over to our environment. We'll do a new deploy. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the new package. And we'll choose three. We'll go ahead and deploy. And we'll wait and see what happens this time around. So again, I expect it to fail because we didn't provision our database. But um, we'll see what happens this time around, okay? All right, so now we get green. Let's go ahead and click the link and see uh, what we get. So hopefully not a 502 anymore. Um, it's not reaching the site, so that's a little bit better. I don't know if it has HTTPS. I'm gonna take that off there, but I suppose that it probably does. Uh, we did open up both the ports for um, SSL or HTTPS and HTTP. Let's go over here and take a look. So if we go back into our current directory, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, go into the log here. And maybe we can see something here. So if we go cat development log, um, I don't know if this is happening. I mean, what we could do is just tail this. And if it's working, what we do is we give this a refresh and we would see that change and it's not changing. So it makes me think that we need to uh, log out this one here. So I'm not seeing any errors. It looks like it's starting up. 
Platform damage finished, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, let's try PS Aux and, and take a look and see if the server is running. Puma. The server is absolutely running, so that is good. Uh, we could also curl locally and, and take a look and see what we get back. So here would be uh, curl local host. Didn't see anything back. Oh, sorry. Is this running on port 3000? What port is this running on? Mm, I mean, we didn't specify a port. 8080, 8000. What port is it running on? I guess if we carefully look here, maybe it will tell us. I'm just scrolling up here and taking a look. So it clearly is running, but we don't see anything. And we can't curl it. So that makes me think like, what port is it supposed to be on? 8080. Usually it's 3000 is the default um, development port. 4567. 4567. Okay. Let me just figure this out. Give me a second. So one thought I had is that um, maybe it's starting up on port 3000, even though I could not uh, query on port 3000. Usually what I would do is I just do curl like local host here, 3000. Um, maybe my issue is I'm going uh, local host. So I'll try 127.0.0.0.1, 3000. Uh, failed to connect to the port. We could try 000 as well, 0000. And so it's saying it can't connect to the port. What if we try 80? Let's try 80 instead. I mean, I'm not getting any errors here. Um, you know, if I, it'd be nice if I could see something. So, you know, I'm not 100% sure what's going on here. I mean, this says it's permanently moved, which is okay. But um, I noticed that it is starting up in development mode, so that's one thing. Um, and if we go over to our configuration for the application, I think somewhere here it sets the environment variables. And I, I never set them. They're just kind of what they were defaulted as. So I'm just trying to kind of look where that is because there's somewhere where we can set environment variables. Uh, network configuration, instance, monitoring, down here. So this one's set for production, and if it is, that means that this should be starting up in production mode, but it's weird because it's showing um, it's showing uh, development development as the log instead of production. So I feel like what we'd have to do is we'd have to do Rails ENV. Um, I actually don't want to skip migrations, so we'll leave that alone. Um, and we do want to skip asset compilation because that's not never going to happen. And I'm going to go ahead and do this and see if that makes any difference. So there's definitely that. I wonder if it's having any issues with our um, herb template file. Because I did see an error in the development.log talking like didn't know what format our uh, our, our uh, file was here. So I'm just going to go check here. It has home here as the type. So it should know what it is. So I don't think that's really the issue. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to ignore this stupid password thing. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to um, restart the app server and see if that makes a difference. Okay, so we'll try that, and we new have new environment variables, and hopefully that will take effect. Be back here in just a second, okay? All right, so we've restarted that there, and so I'm going to give this a refresh. Of course, no errors, so nothing indicating anything that's wrong. We'll give this a nice refresh here, and um, I'm hoping that this time it's picking up uh, that environment variable. We uh, killed our connection there, so we're going to have to go ahead and reestablish our connection to our instance. So we'll go ahead and try this with Sessions Manager. And we'll just do sudo su hyphen ec2 user. And we'll make our way over to that var directory, var app current. And we'll just cd into that. One thing we could check is we just check what environment variables we have. As it should be passing those along. What I'm looking for is like the ones that are supposed to be set for like environment rails. Um, I don't particularly see any of those set. So I'm actually really surprised how would it know what to launch the server in if it didn't do that. It's still development log too, which seems wrong to me. I'm going to go use a uh, to look at this. I'm going to go to the top here. Still trying to establish a connection. It says blocked hosts. So it's starting in development, right? 
it's blocked because it's saying, hey, it, we're only going to allow from here, right? Which doesn't help a whole lot because um, that's for development and we're trying to do this for production, which is really frustrating. But um, we could work around this. So like what we could do is we could go and change this, but I, I don't understand why the environment variables are not taking effect here um, that we're setting. So that to me is um, a bit of surprise. And I'm not sure where we had those set. It, set. So yeah, just let me go figure out why the environment variables are not being passed along. All right, so what I found out is that there is this command uh, called get config under the Elastic Bean directory, and it will actually print out the environment variables. But to me, it seems like they're not actually being set because, you know, again, if we were to check um, our environment saying e env, uh, well, I guess the other thing is that maybe they are set, but the user that I'm logged in is, is not utilizing that. Um, so, but I would assume that it's using the EC2 user unless there's some kind of other user that's list, uh, uh, using. So let me go figure that out next, I guess. So here I just listed out the users. Um, basically, all, all I did was do this. I just said um, less, et cetera, password. And so I'm just looking through here. I'm just trying to see if there is a, um, a user that I'm not aware of. So there is like a web app user. But then we have our EC2 user. So yeah, I wonder what happened if I was to just exit here, sudo su hyphen uh, web app. And let's just say we say env here. I mean, I see Ruby version, but I don't see any of the ones that I set. So again, wh why, why are they not set? And that's my confusion here. So I guess I'll just keep investigating. All right, so this is something that was posted here and I'm not crazy because if you go down here into the comments, people are talking about like, if we expand this here. So they're like, anyone else going out of their minds hitting countless DevOps issues with Rails on Elastic Beanstalk? And they're saying not only Rails, but everything. Um, so, it's a little bit confusing, but maybe there's something here that will indicate to it, but clearly the docs are not up to, up to date. And the last time I did Elastic Beanstalk, and I covered it thoroughly in my uh, developer, app, uh, developer course, um, a last version is that it just worked. Like there wasn't all these issues, but um, I guess I'll read this thoroughly and see if I come back with a solution here. I was gonna ask Baco, cause Baco has been doing our Elastic Beanstalk deploys as of recent, but uh, he went out to the dentist. So I guess I'll have to solve this. And there was a link to an article here, which no longer works. And then down below here, um, this is, it's suggesting we make an EB extension file and we're basically using that get config and then we're just injecting it into uh, that environment. So that's kind of interesting. Um, I think we have an Elastic Beanstalk uh, uh, app that we deployed when we did one of our boot camps, And so I'm gonna go take a look at that repo and maybe Baco um, knew that and he ended up uh, configuring that. So I'm just curious, I'm gonna go into this the Rails app here. And I'm looking for an EB extension file, which I don't see. Um, let's see if there's anything else interesting here. No, but I, I have a feeling that he probably ran this in containers and not uh, straight on the virtual machine because this does have a Docker file. So yeah, I'm thinking what he did is he ran this Elastic Beanstalk in containers as opposed to the Rails environment. And so he didn't need to have that extension file so maybe this is what we're gonna have to do. And I'm not sure about all this. It says JQ hyphen R to entries, period, export, key, value. So it looks like this is what we need, okay? Um, and we need that dot .eb extension. So again, this is just a total guess, but uh, just using my developer, uh, developer knowledge, I think this might solve our issue. If I can find git pod, here we go. And so I'm going to make a file here. I'm gonna assume that it has to be here. I'm not exactly sure where we need to put it, but I'm gonna place it here and we'll go ahead and paste in. <laughs> not what I wanted, but we'll go ahead and paste this in here. All right, so we'll save that. And I mean, I don't know if we can have like that much indentation. I'm just gonna make it two level indentation because it is a YAML file clearly. 
You just put this back to the wall and then indent it again, just in case there are any hard tabs in there. I'm gonna clear this out. And um, yeah, people were suggesting they logged in as EC2 user and they're able to see the environment variables there. So that's what we should expect. I'm gonna go ahead and um, zip this like we did last time. Before I do that, I'm just gonna delete this uh, package here. Hopefully my uh, readme, we place this in here. Okay, good. We'll hit enter um, and then we'll download this one. So that will download that file and that button's driving me crazy. But every time I log my computer, there's always a new Chrome version and I don't really want to relaunch it right now. But I'm waiting for that to download. I'm going to go over to um, our environment and we'll go ahead and do a new deploy. All right. And so I think this time it might work. Okay. All right. So it looks like the new one has been uploaded here. I'm going to give this a nice refresh. And the question is, uh, did it take effect, um, that thing I had there? So I'm going to go ahead and just close that out, give this a refresh here, and we'll go ahead and connect. And the question will be, will it would actually have ran that EB extensions file? And is there a way for me to actually check for that? Uh, and that's what I, I don't really know, but we'll go ahead and do EC2 user here. And I'm going to type in EMV and hit enter. And so I'm hoping again that those are getting set. I do not see them set. Um, we can go over to uh, our application here and click through. It's still not resolving. So again, I just don't think those are being set. Um, even if we could run that manually and get it to work, it would not necessarily work uh, right away. So the question will be how this EB extension file will work. Uh, save the EB extension to deploy it to your Elastic Beanstalk environment to test if the variables are being exported, connect to your instance, but, which is what I'm doing. Uh, before testing, close any existing sessions and then reconnect. That's what I did. And then grep for the name. So, I mean, because you're using the commands on EB extension, you can update the sh local file only with a new deployment. If you add or change the variable in the environment, then you must create the new deployment before the variables is exported to the operating system, which is totally fine. Um, I still don't think that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to tell it to restart the environment again. Wait, hold on here. Are you sure you want to rebuild? Um, rebuilding the environment may take several minutes during the application will not be available. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that because I've just been having so much trouble here. And I'm just hoping that that EB extension files is what's going to get loaded into place. Okay. While that environment starting up, it suggested that we could take a look at the CFN init or CFN init command logs to see if those environment variables are being set uh, by the EB extension. So that's something we're going to have to find out as it rebuilds this environment. And again, the reason why I um, decided to completely uh, restart it is just that I just did not have confidence in this environment. Um, and so, I mean, restarting should have been sufficient enough, but just in case. Uh, it was something that ran once and uh, never persisted. Uh, that's the reason why I need to uh, uh, do this here, even though it seems very uh, aggressive. But we'll wait here uh, until it uh, it works. And you know what could make it a little bit easier is just watching CloudFormation, as that's going to give us a clear indication. Yeah, that's fine. There's no password there. <laughs> a clear indication as to uh, what's going on there. Okay. All right, so it looks like our um, environment is now in a better working state or it's back to the state it was that we wanted it to be. I'm going to refresh this here as we should have a, a new database instance. Um, not that I can tell any difference from that. Um, I want to go and close just a few of these tabs so it's a little bit less confusing. And what I'm looking for here is our environment. So I'm not really seeing any of those tabs. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to Elastic Beanstalk. And we'll go over here. And uh, even though I entered that one stupid simple password, it's going to keep popping up on me, even though I've turned that service off. It's driving me crazy. Um, so if we click through here, I'm assuming that this isn't going to load. That's fine. Is it resolving? No, no, it's not resolving. Okay, great. And we'll go over to our instance and we'll go and connect and we'll see if we can connect here. There we go. 
and we'll do sudo su hyphen ec2 user env and I don't see anything loaded there. So I guess the next suggestion was to go in and check those cloud init files. So we'll just look up EC2 logs, system logs, because I'm pretty sure this will tell me where the paths are here. There we go. And so in here, we might have this. Um, so we'll go ahead and first look at that. I'm gonna use Vi, just so it's easier to navigate in Vi for me. And it didn't actually copy the URL, so I'll go back over to here and we'll copy this. And I'll type in Vi and I'll paste this in and we'll hit enter. Um, so not a whole lot there, okay. And that's fine, but uh, maybe the other one will give us more information. So we'll copy this one here. We'll paste it in, Vi. Just carefully looking here, still not very useful. I'm gonna just CD into the log directory. And we'll do an ls, ls hyphen la. Um, so yeah, let's just take a look at a couple of these. I I'm, mean, I'm, we might've already looked at these just a second ago, but I'm just gonna go and take a look. So that was the cloudinit.log. And so I'm just gonna search this to see if EB extensions are being loaded here. So just give me a moment to scan it. All right, so I'm not even confident that that worked because I think we actually had to create a folder called EB extensions. And this was something that I was just double checking here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to <laughs> go crazy, but I'm gonna go and delete this file. And uh, I'm gonna actually make a folder called EB extensions. Okay. Uh, so we'll call this um, folder EB extensions. And then in here, we'll just say uh, uh, init.config. I don't think it matters what you call it. It just, it seems like it'll pick up anything that's .config. I'll go down to here. Yeah. And, um, Anyway, I'm going to just place the contents of that EB extension file into, also, I didn't name it EB, I named it .eb extension. So I'm confused, like, can we have an EB extension file? I'll go ahead and paste this in here, set bars. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one. We'll go back here, unless things have changed since the last time I've used it. Uh, you can add an extensions file, EB extension. extensions all right so I'm going to go ahead and just double check this so that looks fine to me I'm going to go ahead and and none of these are responsive so we'll go and CD back into this directory and we'll go over here and we'll copy this again and we'll paste this in again and we'll zip it again. Um, I'm not sure if I actually did zip that, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. I just don't trust it. I wanna zip this again. And uh, so it's zipping. I'm just gonna name it something like four or five, let's just call it 100 here. And that way I'll have less confusion about the package. I'm gonna go ahead and download this package. And I'm gonna go back over to our environment. I'm gonna upload uh, this new one. All right, and we'll deploy that. Hopefully that picks up the settings now, but I, I don't think it actually picked them up, okay? All right, so um, I believe that uh, this deployment is probably done. So hopefully, we have some kind of difference here as we are getting into insanity here, trying to figure out this configuration. And it's totally fine if this doesn't resolve, but it's like, I just wanna be able to go into here and see that my instance uh, is actually setting those NVARs correctly. So go ahead and try this again. 
sudo su hyphen ec2 user env grep or just env here ah there we go okay so it is now setting it because i see this one here absolutely for sure um did it set our rails one i don't necessarily see that here um well i'll carefully look here so we have rail rack production skip migrations false so this looks a lot more promising so now this is not great but at the very least we can go and take a look at our logs so we'll go here and say bar app current and we'll go into our logs here and we'll now we still have development i'm not sure as to why as it really should be running um it should really be running production right and actually if we go here this is set to production so normally we use Rails ENV, not necessarily Rack, but we do have production set down here as well. But the app is still starting in production or development mode, which makes no sense because we have explicitly told it to be production. Um, and we know that it's not actually running production because there are no production logs. That's how we know. Um, so just give me a moment here. All right, so... Yeah, I really don't know why this isn't working. Um, all I can think of, and this seems really stupid, but I'm going to rebuild the environment again because all I can think of is that um, we have those environment variables and they are loaded in there, but ne it's not necessarily utilizing them when it starts up Puma. Um, and I don't configure the Puma file. That is configured by uh, Elastic Beanstalk. And for whatever reason, it's just causing so much grief here but i guess we'll give it another go here and i'm just checking here but interesting to note that in our puma file we do have some things that are defaulted so if there isn't a rails environment it's going to default to development which makes sense and if it doesn't know where to listen it's going to listen on port 3000 um so you know all this stuff kind of makes sense here but uh you know why isn't it picking up those values i don't know i feel like i'd have to inject stuff into the code next to find out um, but, uh, yeah, we'll see after this rebuild. Hey folks, um, welcome back. And so literally it's the next day and I had to pull in my co-founder, uh, to debug this and a couple things, uh, we figured out. Um, the first was that rails and I knew that we needed this. I just couldn't remember what it was called, but it's the secret key base. So we placed that in there. And so that was one thing, um, that it needed because if we didn't have that, it was throwing errors and we could see that in our Puma logs. Um, the other component was that we needed to switch out uh, config force SSL from true to false, as we are not using um, SSL. However, this is still not resolving, but let's go into the instance and see if the environment is actually working. Um, personally, I found this to be extremely painful, and I have deployed Elastic Beanstalk with Rails multiple times in the past, and I'm so surprised how difficult it is this time around. So I would just say that uh, AWS has not made it easy for us here. I'm going to go ahead and connect to this instance. Normally when we deploy applications, we'll just have them containerized. And so in Elastic Beanstalk, you could choose a containerized environment. I strongly recommend anybody that is deploying apps not to use the native, um, the native environments and just go ahead and containerize because there really is no reason not to containerize and just sidesteps all these issues. But I'm going to go ahead and I just want to see um, if we can get to our app and curl it. So if we can curl it, I'll consider this good enough. And so we are curling it and we're getting the response. Why is this not working here? Uh, well, we found out through the setup that Puma is using Nginx and Nginx uh, is trying to um, terminate over to SSL, but for whatever reason, the internal routing is not working uh, correctly. What we can do here is we can go and, I mean, just as a sanity check, I'm just going to make sure it's not running on port 3000. I don't think it is. We don't even have a port open, so that wouldn't make any sense. But anyway, uh, if we go to our logs, uh, apparently we have nothing in our logs, <laughs> even though it's serving up. Uh, and so, you know, what Baker was telling me was that um, it's not going to log here. And where it's actually going to log is in our var logs. And he was saying that he was seeing stuff under Puma. So we go here, and I'm not sure if it showed up under the Puma logs, but we can cat it out and see if we have anything here. And so here we're actually seeing our logs. So instead of the production, they actually get routed over here to the Puma logs. 
um, which anyone who knows Rails, this would confuse them um, because they'd expect it to be in the correct location. But you can see that we're hitting those endpoints. And so to me, I'm satisfied with this uh, sufficiently enough, even though we didn't get a proper deployment. Uh, just do containers, do containers. Uh, the way you do containers is if you were to uh, launch an environment, what we'll do is we'll shut this one down and then I'll just show you kind of where, where that would be. Um, but let's go ahead and kill this environment. So we'll go ahead and just terminate the environment and we'll say, under the name of the environment, so we'll go ahead and just do this. All right, and we'll just have to monitor that. But uh, what I'm gonna do here is just create a new environment. I just wanna show you where that would be. So down over where we choose a platform, what we would do here is we just choose Docker instead. And that way we could deploy our, um, our Docker instance. And you can see that we can choose whether we wanna run it uh, an EC2 instance on Docker or ECS. Uh, ECS, of course, is a lot easier. But what we have found is that if we go over to um, our application here, um, this is not a public repo, but it's what we use to run uh, one of our boot camps. We built an LMS uh, very quickly for it. But this one, basically we dropped in a Docker file, right? And so there was that Docker file and basically it would install Ruby so we wouldn't have to bring Ruby versions. We'd set our secret uh, key base. Uh, we'd set the environment to production, right? Um, we'd run the startup, uh, startup script here so we go here and you could see it's simply just migrating, pre-compiling and running the server on binding on port 000, port 80, uh, and there you go. So nothing super complicated there and definitely I would recommend uh, running containers. Uh, would I shoot another video here showing you with containers? Uh, maybe, it depends on what cert it is for, but uh, right now I don't need to do that. So we'll call this good enough and um, understand the uh, limitations of Elastic Beanstalk, because you could see the um, CLI was not uh, working as expected. Now, I did find out that there is another way to install the CLI um, that's not necessarily recommended, but it's a way that we can do it. And so I'm just curious to test that out before uh, we do anything else here. So I'm going to go ahead to AWS examples. I just want to see if we can use the brew install to do it. And um, anyway, so if we want to try to install, there's another way, which is brew install. Um, you have to obviously have the brew package manager. Gitpod has that pre-installed. Uh, but we'll do brew install AWS, uh, or it's like EBCLI. It might be AWS EBCLI. We'll see if that works. Yeah, it's this. And, you know, you don't always want to install packages from the CLI because they could be... Um, uh, not always up to date. And usually with AWS... Um, I, I don't recommend installing from brew packages, but this one could be installing a very specific or an older version of um, the, the Elastic Beanstalk CLI that specifically works with our version of Python um, or could just generally work because an older version might work with a newer one for whatever reason, I, I don't know. But we'll go ahead and just, or it might also set up um, a Python environment or it might be a compiled binary. Whatever the case is, the point is, is that this one might work um, for whatever reason. And already I'm seeing it's like checking out a different version of Python. It looks like that's what it's doing. So we'll just wait a moment here and see what happens. All right, now let's see if EB works. Now we did have it installed prior, so that might have an issue, but now it's working fine. So whatever, we could have used um, EB. There's probably a tutorial out there, like we'll say Rails, EB, AWS CLI. Let's just see if there is one here. Um, just to get you kind of an idea what it might look like. This uh, this looks a little bit old here, but you would initialize your project, sure. And then you could set up, but we did EB extensions, but here they're setting up some commands for swap files to do some rotation. They're setting up their home directory. They're configuring their database. Maybe not the best example. I'll go down to here. Maybe code with JSON might have a better one. Yeah, this is a better one here. So here they're doing... Uh, And I'm just telling Bako because uh, Bako didn't uh, make sure that it worked from this link. And he's saying, oh, I'll look into it now. And I'm like, no, we're done. <laughs> I'm 100% done this one. 
But yeah, you would initialize it. So you do eb init, um, then you would add a configuration file. And so here you can see the specific configurations for our global environment here. Um, this is kind of probably what we would have done. So that we create our environment, then there's that secret key base, which we forgot for quite a while. Um, we saw that we did the EB extensions. This one is setting up the pre-compile, but we turned that off in ours. Then it looks like you can set up um, a bunch of steps. So again, this is for Node.js, which we did not do. Um, here we have uh, installing the gems. So that's a very particular way of, well, this is installing a, a bundler in particular to, to install uh, gems. And then they have the deploy. So, you know, it could have been interesting to use, but um, whatever, that's fine. Let's go back over to here and make sure this stuff is shut down. So the easiest way to be go over to CloudFormation. I do not want to retain the uh, database here. So I'll just wait for this to finish. I'll be back in just a moment, okay? All right, so that appears to be deleted. Just to make sure that it's deleted, I'm gonna go over to RDS because I really don't want that running here uh, since that is gonna be one of our cost factors here and that database is gone. I don't want any snapshots. We'll make sure there are none as well. Good. Let's make our way over to EC2 as we do have that uh, security group we launched up earlier. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you learned a lot uh, through that debugging process and uh, you got some practical, uh, practical advice out of Elastic Beanstalk. I'll see you in the next one, okay? Ciao.